Newcastle United nil, Brighton won. Is Eddie Howe now under pressure, I suppose, is the question on many people's lips. Maybe not everybody's. Maybe some people are thinking, don't be so fucking ridiculous. We played just fine. Adam, how do you feel after that? Oh, a bit deflated, a bit frustrated, a bit annoyed. I think it's... Um it's 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 similar it's it's similar problems that we faced against Everton. We're creating loads of chances, but an inability to finish and be clinical in those moments is is, is cost us again. And the hilarity of this the, the first half was it was probably the best first half, most complete performances we put in, and we went down into half time one 0 So I, I, it's it's confusing. I think this really encapsulates what this season is all about. I can't really articulate. I don't understand it. We seem to be playing well and then we lose. We don't play well and we we win. It, it's it's crazy. Everything just seems very topsy turvy, very inverted. Yeah, that's the thing. I think um, I think it's very frustrating. I think there probably are questions being asked, if not pressure, on Eddie Howe at the moment. Um, that is exactly it, isn't it? It's the it's the playing badly and winning, but once everything you know, you, c- you can only get away with that for so long, and then playing well but not not winning. Now Everton was one thing uh, because um, we didn't have a striker on the pitch and we were we were missing all of that. But um, it's fine. We we don't care. Um, the um, the problem is today we did. We actually ended the game with two strikers on the pitch. We had Osula on the pitch and we had Isak on the pitch. We had Anthony Gordon, who's supposed to be, uh, you know, a goal scorer, who clearly in the first half, you know, seemed to have want to prove something after the Everton game. And um, and then we finished the game with Harvey Barnes, who's also a goal scorer, and there are no goals scored. So it's very, very frustrating watch. I can't fathom again why, why Jacob Murphy is getting picked ahead of Barnes. Like, if you are creating lots of chances and not being able to finish them, what you need is you need someone who can be clinical in front of goal, be an instinctive finisher, and that's what Harvey Barnes is. And I don't know what he has to do to get a start around here. And I think, I think Murphy offered very, very little today. I think when players like Gordon and Isak are missing the chances, your third attacker needs to be either creating them or scoring or trying to score. And, and Murphy, for me, is doing absolutely nothing. Well, give it a thing. <laughs> So that's very frustrating for me, and we had enough today to beat them, and we, we couldn't. We're just not clinical in front of goals. Something's not clicking. And the pressure you talk about, Eddie Howe, he's, he's not pressure on his job, but his pressure to... This was a bit of a six-pointer for European places a little bit, and I think the pressure is on for him to get this team to click because we've got all the players fit. Most, most of our starters absolutely fit. They should be working better to get today. I didn't see... Bet, I could have seen better movement today. I could have seen better chemistry today, and I didn't. And I, and I don't quite want, know what's going to take to get them to click better but there is something lacking and I don't know what it is yeah that's the thing and, and it wasn't for lack of chances like we created a lot of chances today um, but the two very very clear shots on goal that we had we just rolled it straight to their keeper like straight at him not trying to even aim for anywhere else in the goal and that I find just deeply frustrating I know that Isak has been out with a toe injury and maybe it's going to take him a couple of games to warm back up but I found that he was drifting out he was coming deep he wasn't getting service when he was in position and uh, that's really annoying to to watch but uh, the clicking part is interesting because it did feel like it was clicking like before we when we didn't have a striker and you think oh i can't wait for the striker to come back and they fucking didn't do anything yeah it's just we i mean we we're trying to play balls over the top and it was it was just a lot of nearly moments i think today the load of just didn't quite click just didn't get it over the top just didn't get in and i, and I think the second half I mean, our press, seemed, our press seemed really effective in the first half, but in the second half, our press was less effective. We were more tired, absolutely tired. were fatigued, and it gave Brighton a lot more space to pass around, a lot more time on the ball as well, and we, did, we, we found it harder to get a foothold, as much of a foothold in this game, because we absolutely strangled them the first half, yeah. but we just, couldn't, we just couldn't get the ball in the net to sort of, you know, you need to score in those moments when you're dominant, you need to put the ball in the back of the net, and we just can't seem to do that at the moment. I, I, I had every hope and belief that we could have got an equaliser towards the end, but just not enough. It got to the point where it probably didn't look like we were going to score at all. Yeah, very frustrating. Like We had a, um, a pretty close to the goal free kick right at the end there, and um, I was thinking, all right, well, this is just going to be another opportunity that we waste, because like that's what the, ga- the game had worn me down into that into that cynical little nub and I was really like okay I guess I'll wait for us to miss this chance and then I'll go and film the video um 
but uh, you know there's there's still enough spark there I don't think like all is lost or anything like that there is still enough spark there in this team it just needs to gel a little bit better maybe we need to you know spend a bit more time on the training ground with the strikers in full flow one thing that Brighton struggled with was pace and that's why I think putting Miggy on from the start would have been better um, Osler, like maybe he can't score yet in a Premier League game but he was certainly very, he's got a lot of pace he's certainly irritating for their keeper and for their defence, putting him on maybe a bit sooner might have just disbanded them a little bit more but you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, doesn't matter now but um Things to think about, I think. Um, anything else to add? Just a, a quicker shout out to Joel Linton. I thought he was our clear man of the match today. He was, was great. Yeah, he was. I, I thought Joel Linton just he encapsulated those battling qualities and his drive towards. He really had the right attitude today, got the crowd going, and I just thought an excellent performance. Mopped up a couple of shaky defensive moments as well. Yeah, Joel Linton by far our best player today. Um, we'll leave it there uh, with a happy call out but thank you so much for watching we'll be back with our main podcast of course after this Uh, take care